ओम नम श्री यदिराज विवेकानंद सूर्य सचिद सुख स्वरूप स्वामी ने तपहार स्वामी विवेकानंद स्पिरिचुअल मिशनरी वर्क स्टार्टेड द डे व्हेन ही गेव हिज फर्स्ट लेक्चर इन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स इन शिकागो इन 1993 सितंबर 11 and he passed away in 1902 july 4th during this time he spoke on many subjects he wrote he preached he traveled in different parts of india in the us and also in europe now at the end of all these activities he makes a very profound statement which gives a clue into what actually he wanted to teach the world he said i taught nothing but obeisances if you look at what i preach what i taught i didn't preach anything other than obeisances this is what he said about his own intellectual activities and then when he returned to india in 1897 in one of in fact, the first lecture that he gave in india at that time ceylon which now known as sri lanka was part of the uh, indian subcontinent the british empire swamiji makes a very very important statement even more more important than what is there earlier he said if manu came back to the he won't be bewildered and he won't find himself in a strange land now who was manu manu was the ancient lawgiver of india who may have lived around 3000 bc and so i may say if manu returned in 1897 you'll find the same great vedic culture surviving in this country in his various forms now if you go to india today and even if you go to the bay area if you look at the structure the architecture of these hindu temples the music programs that are going on even the music some of the classical music which is sung here by those who got training in indian classical music they follow the tradition the musical tradition that goes back to vedic times bharata muni lived in vedic times bharatanatyam is the original textbook on indian dramatics one of the famous, most well known books on indian aesthetics so what does it mean now we are talking about neo vedanta neo could mean new recent modified something ancient that expresses itself in different ways in the study first century all these new movements new manifestations of vedanta are like different types of golden ornaments the necklaces the rings different things that you wear but the essence is gold so the real vedanta is gold and this gold itself expresses in so many different ways in so many different times in so many different manifestations taught and inspired by different teachers and the latest currency is the currency founded by vivekananda but a currency as it backgrounds the gold value so today i am sri ramakrishna said, said it in the gospel you know there is a difference between currency and gold if you just print paper it has no value the paper should have a purchasing power then only it becomes currency the vedanta philosophy as such was essentially the creation of shankaracharya who in 8th century ad who who actually founded this vedanta metaphysics epistemology its logic uh, in different 
aspects of hermeneutics and different aspects of philosophic system. Before Shankara, there were a number of attempts to uh, interpret Vedantic, Vedic literature right from 9th century BC onwards. It's called Skanda Swami's first rudimentary commentary on some of the day on the Suttas, which are all actually in very ritualistic, non philosophical, non spiritual way of interpretation. Then Nirukta by Yaska in the 4th century BC, and then a number of other interpretations were highly ritualistic. See, Sangracharya in the 8th century wrote his commentaries on the 10 Upanishads, which represent four Vedas Rig Veda, Ejir Veda, Sama Veda, Athar Veda, fit four Mahavakas, each representing one Veda. And then came Swami Vivekananda in the 19th century. What did Swamiji do? Swamiji made a revolutionary contribution to Vedanta. Every great saint and teacher, he brings forth the best from his past, he practices in his life, then he reinterprets and passes on to the next generation. Because if Vivekananda emerged in the late 19th century, the late half of 19th century, who interpreted Vedanta in the light of the socio-economic, philosophical conditions of the late 19th century. You can find Swamiji referring to socialism. I am a socialist, not because it's a perfect system, but because half a loaf is better than no bread. Even Karl Marx should be proud of coining an expression like this, though he could not do that, unfortunately. Now, in Vivekananda, you find this new approach to social reform, to pure humanism, social equality, economic equality, the need to wipe out, the, eradicate social injustices. But if you ask me the question, what was Vivekananda's greatest contribution to Vedanta? As somebody who was teaching history in India before joining God and the university, I can tell you, Vivekananda's greatest contribution was that he reminded us that Vedanta represents the core of Hindu culture, Hindu spirituality, and Hindu philosophy. If you follow Vivekananda's footsteps all the way from Colombo to Almora, you find Swamiji repeating again and again, return to the Vedas, and this took him all the way towards founding, towards, the, towards uh, predicting or anticipating the founding of Vedic Pardashala in Belum, which actually became a reality about 30 years ago. And what Swamiji said was, whenever there is a conflict, a contradiction, at the philosophical, ritualistic, or social culture level between Vedas, Sudhis, Smudhis, and Puranas, we should uphold the views of the Sudhis and reject the views of Puranas and Smudhis if they contradict the teachings of the Vedas. For example, what we are teaching today is pure Vedanta, the message of the Upanishads which presents a more, very universal, very humanistic and a message that could be accepted by all, practiced by all, a tradition that opens the doors and windows even to non-believers. Can you imagine a statement from Vivekananda? He says, if, he says, you live your life in such a way that God accepts you even if you don't accept him, the existence of God doesn't depend upon our affirmation of his existence. In fact, uh, in the, there are a number of Pramanas, so Swamiji's greatness was, he never claimed copyright to what he said. Today you find a number of people making some very, very, I would say, ridiculous claims that Vivekananda's philosophy, Vedanta, is totally different from 
the great philosophical traditions of the early teachers? Absolutely not. You find, for example, in modern times, many people claiming that Shankaracharya said the world is unreal. World is like a dream. No. What Shankaracharya said was, this world that we find today in front of you doesn't remain the same all the time. Something that remains without any change for billions of years in, and which is experienced the same in the past, present and future in waking dream and deep sleep alone can claim to be the absolute reality and the world is not absolute reality. Even this, this mic system I am using today did not have this form 10 years ago. It must have been lying somewhere 1000 feet below the earth in the form of an iron ore. So, but then what happens is Niyo Vedanta also is a piece of deception, an attempt to appropriate Vedanta, giving it a, an absolutely inaccurate modern interpretation. Remember, gold cannot be forgotten. You cannot print dollar notes, billions and trillions of dollar notes without any gold reserve. If the factories are closed, no products coming. You just produce piece of gold, golden this dollar notes. They have no value. Similarly, Neo Vedanta can survive only on the basis of the real classical Vedanta. The branch of a tree cannot declare independence of the of the of the trunk of the tree of the roots of the tree. No, I'm independent. It will, it will be there again. Similarly, even in Christian tradition, just imagine, can anyone study Christianity, the classical man, without acquaintance and understanding? You may disagree with them, but you cannot say Aquinas is wrong, Augustine is wrong, I know Christianity. You cannot disagree with Einstein and get a job in any of the American universities as a physicist. Similarly, Neo Vedanta has a great value, but the point is, its real value depends upon the classical Vedanta. But Swamiji's contribution should always be emphasized. Practical Vedanta, it is Swamiji's new way of interpreting Vedanta. Universal religion, a new way of interpreting Vedanta. Interpretation is new, and interpretation has to be new. Every teacher, even Vivekananda says, every teacher is a, only a new interpreter. And Swamiji says, Buddha was, Buddhism was nothing but an attempt to interpret Upanishad philosophy in a humanistic fashion. What Vivekananda did in modern times was nothing but to give Vedanta an interpretation that is acceptable to these modern times in the 19th century, when Abrahamic religions were facing a great problem with the publication of the Darwin's original species, the Marx, Engels, the Communist Manifesto, and again, Das Capital, and also the new discoveries, modern Western world, especially Europe and the East Coast of America, were about to reject the claims of Abrahamic religions. Swamiji so, actually affirmed that all religions contain in all of them some basic, fundamental, spiritual, universal, humanistic truths. And from that standpoint, every religion is an equally valid path leading to the same goal. No religion is wrong. This idea, A comes up with Prabhupada Rigveda Samhita, 10th, 10th, sorry, 1st Mandala 164 Sutta, it is called. First Mandala Andres is one. Indra Mitram Varuna Makti Rahu, Ado Divya Sasuparna Virutman, Ekam Sati Prabhu Gutha Vadanti, Akni Yamamandri Swana Mahu. This ancient Vedic truth in the, in, in, in the language of Swami Vivekananda becomes universal religion and its actual practical application becomes practical Vedanta. It is a very unique revolutionary contribution from Swami Vivekananda 
to be done done. So in modern times we need modern currency that is Vivekananda's currency. But at the same time, the brand doesn't deny it depends upon, depends upon the tree and the roots. So we should always be careful. Whenever somebody tells you that Vivekananda created a new system, it totally a contradiction of the classical Vedantic ideas. Please remember, you can go to a university and say, I'm now teach a new physics. It totally contradicts Einstein and uh, let's say Newton. They will not give a job in any even a, in a kindergarten here. Like that, Swami Vivekananda was only giving a new interpretation. The ancient gold, Swamiji, uh, uh, Swamiji actually built a wonderful ornament in modern times where he used the ancient gold. That's why he said, I preach, I talk only the Upanishads. This is actually the significance of New Vedanta. Thank you, Namaskar.